I just wanted to, to, to tell the committee about that uh, experience. My Lords, we've already had a very extensive debate, so I'll be very brief, but I have to note that I've heard my noble friend Baroness Jones of Molscombe talk about this issue very often, and it's something she's extremely passionate about, and I have no doubt that she would have attached her name to this amendment were there space available to it under our systems. And I think we've had some terribly powerful contributions, particularly the noble lady Baroness Harris of Richmond, that I really hope the government's listening to. And I'm not sure the point has been made that actually restorative justice should be the foundation of our justice system. It should be fundamental to what it's all about. And at the moment, by contrast, it seems to be the afterthought that's just added on at the end. And that means some really practical things which we've seen loss of funding for. Restorative justice training for all prosecutors, including the independent bar, so that they can better identify opportunities for restorative justice when handling cases. We also need to see training for magistrates and judges on restorative justice so that they can be fully involved in facilitating it. Just as in the civil courts, judges have a central role in enabling alternative dispute resolution. In the criminal courts, they should be promoting and encouraging a restorative approach all the way from the initial arraignment right through to sentencing. And what we're talking about here is coming out of the, after the awful event of a crime, of actually repairing, restoring, making things better. And what we have at the moment, we know well from our criminal justice system, a system that everyone comes out at the end of feeling worse about. And that's really not working for the people involved. It's not working for the victims. It's not working in providing change for the perpetrators, and it's not working for the entire community.